good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone. My name is Juan Wei Lin, I'm a medical doctor from Brazil. I'm very happy to be here today to share one of my studies. Uh, I would like to thank all the organizing committee of this IFPH uh, conference, and especially Dr. Saji and uh, all the directors, and I would like to thank all the participants to, to, uh, to that are here to hear my presentation. Um, today, I will, the title of my presentation is Why Homeopathy for the Prevention and Treatment of SARS-CoV-2 Infection? Um, in this, uh, this is a book that I, I, I'm bringing to you today. To, uh, to say that uh, the um, homeopathy is considered, according to this uh, author, um, um, bioenergetic medicine, like, like in traditional Chinese medicine. And uh, the way of how homeopathy is working is the same like in TCM. And that is why here in this presentation I give in last month in another webinar that uh, I, I the title of my presentation was to know which medicine we should prescribe, we need to know what type of a person we have nowadays. And that is why in this presentation I will present to you which kind of patients we have nowadays that are infected by SARS-CoV-2. A coronavirus is a novel viral infection which first appeared in Wuhan, China on November and December 2019. And in March, there are more than one, one, 120 million infected patients and more than two, two, two million deaths worldwide. And several studies have been developed with the aim to better comprehend, prevent, and treat coronavirus infection. However, the majority of these studies are focused on the pathogen SARS-CoV-2. And this study that I will present today is according to Hippocrates. Hippocrates said, it's important to consider other ancient medical traditions prior to the knowledge we have nowadays. So in this presentation, I will uh, use uh, some theories in traditional Chinese medicine to you to understand uh, how is the COVID-19 infection in the energy point of view and not only looking at the virus itself. And another quote from Hippocrates, it is, it is far more important to know what sort of a person has a disease than what sort of disease a person has. He's saying this quote that it's important to treat the patient and not the disease. And the Western medicine treatment is focusing on the disease itself and they are not treating the patient. In this presentation, I'm showing you the necessity to treat the patient and not the COVID-19. Here's the Hahnemann, our uh, most uh, important person in homeopathy was found in, in these dates, 1779, and it has more than, more than 242 years of existence. And, but in this presentation today, as traditional Chinese medicine has more than 5,000 years, it has much experience in the practice and that is why I'm, I am bringing to you today some theories that are um, I'm using, using homeopathy you, and using traditional Chinese medicine reasoning following Hippocrates thoughts. In this presentation today, I explain some concepts in traditional Chinese medicine and to prevent and to treat these patients that are infected by this SARS-CoV-2. In this tree like figure, I showed you in my last presentation about the constitutional homeopathy of the five elements, a theory that I created uh, in five years ago and published it uh, last year. 
I'm demonstrating this tree like a figure. This tree represents the human being, and it is representing uh, that this tree has a trunk with several branches. Each branch represents one medical specialty. And coming out of each branch, you can see many leaves, and each leaf represents one disease and symptoms treated by Western medicine and also by homeopathy doctors. And homeopathy nowadays, uh, I think they are treating the leaf of many kinds of uh, specialties at the same time. That you can see each medication can treat many symptoms of many specialties at the same time. But they're looking at the root and some kinds of medication can treat these roots, but nowadays we cannot understand how is this treatment that the patient are recovering, but what is this, um, the energy or what is happening that is treating or not the root of this tree? We don't know if they are treating. Uh, sometimes they can treat, but sometimes we don't know if they are treating. That is why in this theory that I create constitutional homeopathy, I am looking not the leaf level, but the root of this tree. And that is why in this presentation, to see why homeopathy to prevent and treatment these kind of patients, I am emphasizing what is happening at the root of this tree that is leading the diverse symptomatology of these SARS-CoV-2 infection patients and also emphasizing the influence of the external pathogenic factors that are cold, wind, heat, humidity, and dryness that nowadays is not um, very common and is not important in Western medicine reasoning, but it's very important, this consideration in traditional Chinese medicine reasoning. Here, the tree, the, in the root of this tree, that's the five elements. And the yin yang, yang theory, the five elements represent, uh, is the theory that represents all what is happening in our world. And in this theory, each element represents one massive organs in the internal organs. In the water represents kidney, the wood represents liver, fire, heart, the earth is the spleen and the metal is the lung. And the, the yin yang, yang theory, it's represented by this symbol. And this is very important to you to understand the relationship between these four energies, because all the medications of the homeopathy medications are based on these four energies. They are treating this disharmony, but you don't know at, the, at this moment, but the, the, the medication are acting in these four energies, yin, yang, qi, and blood to, to, to promote health of the patient. But, okay. And if there are some energy deficiencies of these yin, yang, qi, and blood, or a combination of these four energies, there is a manifestation of internal heat formation. And this internal heat formation are in this infection, the inflammatory process that are very important in this kind of patients. And they usually in Western medicine, they treat with the corticosteroids that I will show you how, why we cannot use corticosteroids in these kind of patients because it will harm more these internal energy disharmony. I will show you in the next slide. Here's the five elements I want to repeat because I, I, I will have only 30 minutes to expose one this, this uh, lecture that normally I expose in 60 minutes. And here is the, the, some questions that I usually do in my, all my patients to diagnose how is the situation of each energy in, uh, in the first appointment of the patient. To diagnose indeficiency, I, I usually question the patient if the patient feels hot, 
mainly in the extremities is the is a very common this situation in the menopause woman but uh, per, a normal person not in the menopause could have in deficiency too and this deficiency can lead to many manifestations such as uh, menopause autoimmune hepatitis and many other disease came from oh, diabetes and cancer all came from these energy imbalances. And if it, the patient don't have daily bowel movement, this means blood deficiency. And if the patient have sweating, uh, excessive sweating during the day, this is very common in obese patients. And this could mean qi deficiency. And if the patient has yang deficiency, he feel, feels colder in the feet and the hands. And if the patient has heat retention, the patient could have dry mouth, bad breath, bleeding gums, acne, erectness in the skin, abdominal pain, hematuria, or itching. And uh, to diagnose, uh, how are the energy imbalances? These are the questions you need to ask the patients. Here's to show you that the majority of the treatment nowadays with COVID-19, they, they can have many manifestations and many kinds of specialties at the same time, such as anosmia, renal insufficiency, convulsivitis, flu, abdominal pain, and all manifestations are in the leaf level, but what is happening in this patient at the root level? This is my presentation today. Here's to show you again the five elements I want to repeat. Here's uh, to show you that each element is responsible for one external sensorial organ. What's it is important to know that the wood represents the liver and liver is important for the eye and vision. And if the patient is, has eye, eye problems such as glaucoma or many, any kind of eye problems, you need to treat the liver and not only the eye. And uh, for example, the heart is responsible for a tongue and communication. And if the patient has some problems in communication, you need to treat the heart element and not only the uh, communicate uh, this problem itself. And the, the spleen is responsible for the sense of taste and lung for the sense of smell. Very common in patients with COVID-19 because all these elements are impaired in COVID-19 patient infection. And that is why they are presenting uh, lack of taste and lack of sense of smell because of this lack of energy in this system. And here in this, the kidney is responsible for hearing process. And when your patient has some problems in hearing or have tinnitus or have a loss of a hearing process is because the kidney don't have energy. Here's to show you the, the seven chakras. It's related to the five element theory in some publications uh, in the literature. That, uh, that's why in this study I will show you, I am measuring the seven chakra of the patient. In this case, measuring the chakra, I am measuring the energy of the internal organ, the five massive organs in traditional Chinese medicine. Why I am doing this? because in China, they usually measure the energy of each massive organ, measuring the pulse of the patient in the wrists. But it is very difficult to, to say how is the pulse of the patient and to say, um, and to make it scientifically. And that is why these, using this method, you can, the patient can see how is the, the rotation of the crystal? And he can see, the patient can see that he's without energy and you can see and put in the, and, and, and tell the patient and he can see that he's, he have or don't have energy using this kind of, he is right, this, this is a procedure to measure the chakra's energy. Uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm passing quickly because Dr. Saji gave me only 30 minutes. Uh, I, now I will begin the, the research I did in my clinic in Brazil to show 
how is the population in this situation? In this sample I did in Brazil, I think is the sample that is occurring in the whole world. I measured a thousand uh, patient chakras energy in my clinic uh, from 2015 to 2020. And uh, during the pandemic, we closed the, the clinic and I asked my secretaries to separate the four, um, 409 files of the patients to see their diagnosis, their ages and their energy imbalances and to see the results of this measure. And what the results of this study, I found that I divided in three age groups. I divided in 0 to 19, 20 to 59, 6 to 89. In all age groups, these represent almost 70% of the patients. All the patients in all age groups do not have energy in any of the chakras. In the first chakra is representing the liver. No one have energy. The second is the kidney. No one have energy. And the third is the um, uh, heart. The fourth is response, uh, the, the lung. And the fifth is the spleen. And the sixth is the memory and concentration. You, you'll see that all the patients don't have memory nowadays, including us, I think. And that is why you, you and in this uh, case, the majority of patients, the adolescents have anxiety and depression, the young adults have anxiety headaches, and the older patients have anxiety, knee pain and low back pain, etc. And uh, oh, and in the same group, these are the energy imbalances more common that I found in this patient, in and on deficiency, in and blood deficiency, in deficiency, in and on deficiency, in deficiency, in internal heat, uh, in uh, internal heat. And why I am saying this, this is important to know that there are energy imbalances in the root of the tree that we need to treat. And I think homeopathy medications are treating these energy imbalances when they cure the patients. But we need to know which is the mechanism that they are treating nowadays. Here's one chart to show you the more common energy deficiency is in deficiency, the second internal heat, and the third young deficiency, blood deficiency, and chi deficiency. And here is the most common diagnosis, anxiety, headache, depression, knee pain, low back pain, obesity. And the majority of our patients are female and the, the less male patients are treated in my clinic. And uh, also here is I, I bring one chart to show you that here is the depression patients. Uh, I bring only one chart that there are more charts showing the diverse uh, pathologies, including diabetes, hypertension, patients with obesity. But I bring only this one to show you that the patients with depression, they, have, they can have many other energy disturbances, a combination of yin, yang, qi, and blood heat retention disturbances. And uh, only the depression cannot, is not the diagnosis, because uh, if you uh, take a uh, hundred patients with depression, they are not the same because they have many other energy imbalances that you need to separate them according to their energy imbalances to, uh, to do some research, I think. Um, that is why it's important to understand that the diagnosis in Western medicine is not good for do a research because in the root of this, in the energy imbalances leading to depression or many kinds of Western medicine diagnosis, they can have many energy disturbances that is different from each other. And uh, on this study, I, uh, it is state, uh, state that in traditional Chinese medicine, the epidemic diseases are considered to be caused by the external pathogenic factors invasion. What is the external pathogenic factors invasion? Is the invasion of the virus itself. The virus is considered the external pathogenic factors, but it is 
going uh, with us that uh, cold or wind or heat or dryness and hu humidity. And according uh, with the type of the external pathogenic factor that the patient is receiving at the moment, the, um, the type of uh, clinical manifestation will differ and will differ according to the energy imbalances that the patient had prior to the COVID-19 infection. And that is why depending on the type of the external pathogenic factor and depending on the energy imbalances that each patient has, he will uh, develop the manifestation according to these characteristics. And here is to show you in this study, the massive and rapid transmission of the pandemic is related to the cycle of transformation of the five elements. The fire transforming to earth, earth to metal, metal to water, water to wood. This can explain the uh, rapid transmission of this COVID-19 now of these um, the uh, mutations that they, they are explaining. But in my point of view, I think uh, the, uh, the patients are weak because last year they used many antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, corticosteroids in all these patients, and they became more weak after these uh, medications. And that is why the virus, it's not the virus that is, is strong, but the patient is becoming weaker. And here is a publication uh, that is explaining all the uh, um, climate environment in the epidemic febrile disease. And uh, here, uh, this uh, doctor from US, he is saying that COVID-19 could be related to the 5G technology. The 5G technology is affecting the whole world. And that is why I think the sample I did in my clinic is showing that all the patients that I'm treating in my clinic has no energy in the internal organ. I, I didn't explain to you that the internal organ, each organ has the energy, uh, the function to maintain that in yang and blood. The yin yang is produced by the kidney in the, seven uh, in the second chakra. And the, the blood is produced by the fifth chakra and is controlled by the heart. Uh, to circulate inside the vessel and the chi that is called prana in Ayurvedic medicine or um, bioenergy in, the, in that book. Uh, it, it's all the same. The chi is control and is responsible for the lung and the liver. And as I showed to you, any organs uh, inside the, our body don't have energy to produce these uh, energies to maintain the health of our patients. And what could happen when they are, they, uh, are uh, with COVID-19? Let me see. And the treatment of TCM is based on the syndrome differentiation is, is depend on the type of the, the external pathogenic factor invasion. And uh, the treatment in TCM has several advantages because in TCM, they don't treat the virus itself. They treat the entire human body. They treat the entire patients to increase their immunity. And that is why if you increase the immunity of this patient, you, he, the patient will not get sick. And that's why in TCM, everything that comes from the external world not being related to the internal energies is called external pathogenic factors and COVID-19 is considered external pathogenic factors. And in case of this COVID-19 is in TCM, it is divided in three stages. And the first stages is a stage like a flu-like syndrome that the patient has fever, mild cold, dry cough, less sputum accompanied by headache, bad back, uh, body pain, dry pharynx. But these uh, manifestations are because of this uh, invasion of the external, external pathogenic factors. In this phase, in this phase, uh, we, it is very, uh, we need to act 
in this phase quickly to, to, um, to eliminate the entrance of this external pathogenic factor. And you cannot, this is very important to understand that you cannot tone the energy of the patient in this phase. You need to eliminate this invasion through, for example, if the invasion is of cold and wind, you need to uh, uh, orientate the patient to drink more hot water or to drink uh, tea made by garlic because garlic is hot and can induce uh, elimination of the cold that entrance in the body at this phase. And the second phase, if you don't act in this phase, the external pathogenic factor. Oh, here you can, you can, here in the second phase, when you don't act, uh, eliminating this external pathogenic factor invasion, he will internalize, but he will internalize if the body's um, immunity is not good. But as I showed you, every patient in this world don't have energy to, to prevent this invasion. That is why it's important to us to prevent uh, or to um, increase this energy and increase the, the um, immune system of our patients. But we cannot use the um, high concentrated medication, such as the medication that they, they are asking to the, pa the patients to, to use, such as ivermectin or some antibiotics, because these antibiotics will harm even more the vital energy of these patients and will not improve the system. And that is why in this presentation, I am saying why homeopathy? Why homeopathy? I will explain to you why. And in this second phase, the phase and this external pathogenic factor will enter inside the body and the patient will have the chest pain, reddish complexion, and when they internalize it will, these manifestations are all the formation of internal heat. And this internal heat is characterized by the inflammatory process that we see in COVID-19 infection that has alteration in the laboratory exams. But in the energy point of view, they are characterized by the formation of internal heat. And what we need to do in this phase is to first, you need to change the dietary aspect of the patient to don't to produce more internal heat, um, avoiding fried food, chocolate, uh, honey, coconut, alcoholic beverages, melted cheese, and all dairy products, because all these kinds of food could increase the internal heat formation, aggravating the inflammatory process in the energy point of view. And what they are doing is doing giving corticosteroids in this phase. And what we can do, uh, orientating the patient of, uh, uh, of the dietary aspect and the medication that decrease the um, the internal heat formation in my daily practice, I use these mercurius solubilis and aconitum, but uh, there are more medications that you can use. You, you are more, you know more homeopathy than me, but in my daily practice, I usually use in this kind, these two medications, homeopathy medications to decrease this internal heat formation. But this decrease internal heat formation will not decrease even um, uh, only giving homeopathy. You need to replenish that organ that is inducing the formation of internal heat. And that is why, and uh, in the third phase is, uh, is the manifestation of aggravation, that internalization. And uh, as I show you, all the internal organs are in the lows, don't have energy to act, 
to, to maintain the whole body working. That is why we have so many complications, stasis of blood in the lung, in the entire body, thrombosis, and the myocardial infarction, the strokes, and the bleeding process, because bleeding process is the manifestation of internal heat formation in the energy point of view. And what we need to do is maintain the dietary counseling, and um, we need in this phase to replenish these energies, the, these internal organs energy to reduce this inflammatory process. And what Western medicine is doing nowadays, they are giving so many medication, high concentrated medication that will harm even more these energies that are low nowadays and will induce the formation of more internal heat and aggravating the process. And here's to show you the, the theory that I created to um, link the homeopathy with traditional Chinese medicine. And that is why in this publication, I'm showing you that uh, we can treat the wood element, the liver using phosphorus and the fire element using sulfur. The earth element is the spleen using calcarea carbonica. Use and uh, treat the metal element along uh, treat uh, using silicia and uh, treating the kidney using natrium muriaticum. But uh, to use to replenish to give energy to them work properly because they the body of this patient need energy to survive and if they don't have energy they cannot survive and that is why if the western medicine are giving antibiotics now they are decreasing even more the vital energy of these organs leading to more formation of internal heat and leading to more complications and that is why now we need to act giving homeopathy to these patients and replenishing these energies to allow the body of the patient to produce the yin and qi and blood to they uh, have health to prevent the evolution to pulmonary insufficiency, to renal insufficiency, to uh, many organs insufficiencies because they uh, all the organs in this stage don't have energy to work. And that is why it's important in this phase to you to use homeopathy to replenish these uh, internal organs energy to produce adequately the yin yang qi and blood and to the patient to have condition to survive. And here's the one case report. I don't know if I would uh, will have time. He's a lawyer in Brazil. He was my, uh, my patient, 42 years old. He appeared uh, five months prior to COVID-19 infection with some depression symptoms, dizziness, fearing tired. And I did the, the chakras energy measurement and uh, all his chakra were in the lowest level of energy. And we really began using Chinese dietary counseling, acupuncture, and I use also the theory of the constitutional homeopathy to replenish his chakras energy that I diagnosed that were in the lowest level of energy. And then he disappeared, he worked in Sao Paulo, it's a city 500 kilometers far from my city. And after five months later in the COVID-19 pandemic, he returned to say that he felt in his home uh, and he was feeling very, and had the dyspnea symptoms. And what, uh, and the, the patient in this phase when have dyspnea, dyspnea in traditional Chinese medicine is not the manifestation, could not be the manifestation of the uh, lung problem itself, but it can be related to the or, or other organs that is affecting the lung. In this case, uh, the, in this case, uh, it was because he had kidney 
energy deficiency. All his organs was were deficient in energy, but the kidney is the organ affecting the lung because when the lung sends energy to the kidney, the kidney of this patient don't, uh, was without any energy because this, this patient was not drinking water and water was the main source of energy for the kidney. And that is why when he said that he was feeling uh, dyspnea, I asked him how many water he was drinking. And he, he said he was not feeling desire to drink water. And that's why one of the treatment of the dyspnea is to give water to the patient to replenish the energy of the kidney and allowing the transmission of energy from the lung to the kidney. And uh, uh, I, I began to replenish his chakras energy with the five elements theory. And also I gave him the mercurial solubilis to take out the heat uh, with homeopathy. And he went home and using these homeopathies and also the homeopathy that I showed you to take out the heat, the mercurial solubilis. And all the ch uh, Chinese dietary counseling avoid the chocolate, fried food, egg, honey, coconut, and all the um, raw food, because raw food in these patients, raw, all the raw food are considered cold uh, energy. And when you give raw food in this kind of patient, uh, uh, there are entrance of the external pathogenic factor inside the body through the diet. And that is why you need to orientate to, to um, uh, cook all the vegetables and all the fruits too, because the fruits have cold energy too. And also to orientate the patient to drink only like warm water. Why like warm water? Because water in the natural tour uh, na 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 nature, natural uh, temperature, they have cold energy. And that's why you need to orientate the patient to put this water in the oven to increase the temperature about 32 degrees to um, drink only uh, warm water because only ingesting cold water, it can induce the formation of internal heat, aggravating the inflammatory process of these patients. And this graphic is very important to you to understand why homeopathy for prevention and treatment of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Because when you give, this is Arne Schultz law, it's a theory created in 1888 by two German physicians. In this theory, they are saying that if you give high diluted medication, in this case, homeopathy medications, you will increase the vital, <clears throat> sorry, you, you, you increase the vital energy of the patient. And that's why we need to increase the energy of our patients nowadays. And if you give high concentrated medication, you will decrease even more the vital energy. And that is why I showed you in all the population that I'm treating nowadays, they are having low energy. And that's why when you use high concentrated medication, in this case, all the medication, um, uh, ivermectin, azithromycin, and high, uh, all the medication that they are using nowadays, they are, could decrease even more the vital energy and leading to so many complications and leading to death in some patients, not all. And the, here is to show you the necessity to, to to have this relationship of these four energies in the mind, because we need to achieve this uh, in young Xi'an blood uh, equilibrium inside the, the body's patients to achieve health. And in yang is formed by the kidney in the second chakra, and blood is formed by the fifth chakra or the spleen, and it is circulating inside the vessel by the third chakra, that is the heart. And qi is an energy that when that are in yang and blood in harmony, the qi will be in harmony too. But the qi is responsibility 
of distribution of T in the body is by the liver and by the lung. And as I show you, all the five massive organs don't have energy to maintain this health. That is why there are so many deaths in this pandemic because they don't have energy to fight against the invasion of this external pathogenic factor. And that is why when you use homeopathy medication, we are increase the level of this energy and uh, improving the energy and energy is the immune system of our patient. And that is why it is better to use homeopathy and not uh, antibiotics. Here is one publication I published. Can hospital osteomyelitis be treated without the use of antibiotics? In the publication, I'm saying that, uh, yes, we can treat because in this publication, I'm showing two patients with hospital osteomyelitis, knee, knee osteomyelitis os after surgery that they, <clears throat> they <clears throat> have the, this kind of infection because of the excessive use of the antibiotics that they are using to treat the osteomyelitis itself. And when we took out all the antibiotics and all the anti-inflammatory medications, this patient could improve. Uh, and we use also the Chinese dietary counseling, avoiding the dairy products, all the fried foods, egg, honey, coconut, all the products that can induce the inflammatory process. And uh, with only this kind of improvement, um, taking out the highly concentrated medication, we can um, improve the patient's symptoms. And the next, uh, this publication about diabetes patient, I'm showing this publication that diabetes patient also have chakras energy deficiencies and that all the patients that were considered high risk patients, diabetes, hypertension, myocardial infarction, and uh, <clears throat> all, all what they have in common, are the lack of energy in the chakras energy centers. And that is why in this, this theory that I create is very important to prevent the formation of this infection and the other kinds of the disease. But I know that in India and the other countries, they are using other kinds of homeopathy, very effective in the prevention of this kind of infection too, because uh, such as their use of arsenic album, I did a certain arsenic album action. And according to TCM, they can act in the fifth chakra, in the second chakra, and uh, also can improve the immunity system by, by working in this chakra. And in this publication, I wrote I, chakras energy deficiencies as the cause of dyspnea post-COVID-19 treatment. This treatment, in, there are two or three case reports here that the patient had COVID-19, but they, they didn't have dyspnea during the COVID-19 infection they have only after the treatment because the treatment caused the decrease even more of the vital energy that was already low in all these patients. And that is why the treatment was causing the symptoms of COVID-19. And that's why it is very important to, um, to don't use antibiotics in this case because all these patients are very weak in energy and leading to many complications in the energy level. Here are some webinars that I participate that I want to show you because I didn't wrote this publication yet. Chakras energy deficiency in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In this, um, in this uh, lecture I did, I'm demonstrating that these kinds of patients also have deficiency in energy. And uh, treating this chakras energy deficiency, the oxygenation of this patient will improve. And that is why in this kind of patient of the SARS-CoV-2 infection, if we treat these chakras energy deficiencies, the patient will improve the oxygenation 
only using this replenish of the organs and he will improve even without using oxygen. And here is another, uh, is another lecture that I did in another webinar. Uh, are we vaccinating immunocompetent or immunocompromised people for COVID-19? In this presentation, I'm showing using the same uh, research that I did that the majority of the patients that they are vaccinating today are considered immunocompromised because the immune system, the, the um, energy of these patients are all compromised. I think the sample that I did in my clinic is a, a thousand patients that I measured, but I think this is a sample of the whole world. And that is why it is important to you that are in different countries in this world, begin to measure the chakras energy of our patients to see if this result would be the same. And this will be the other uh, way that you induce the, the doctors to show that it's necessary to use homeopathy and not other kinds of medications. And here is, is to show you the, the, some publication. And here is the same that I'm mean, publishing. Here is another uh, chakras energy deficiency as a cause of fatigue post SARS-CoV-2 infection patients treatment. In this publication that is published, it's not at the internet yet, but in this article, I'm showing that in the three case report, the patient do not have fatigue during SARS-CoV-2 infection, but they had fatigue after the treatment. But the treatment itself are causing symptoms of fatigue, dyspnea, and many other complications because they are harming the vital energy of these patients and lead to these complications. And here is to show you that the cause of loss of taste and smell in patients with SARS-CoV-2 are related to this energy deficiency in the chakras. That is why it is very important to use homeopathy to treat these kind of deficiencies and preventing this kind of infection to increase the vital energy. And here is to show you all the same I showed you. Here's a chart to demonstrate to you that if the Zen key, the Zen key is the energy of the patient is good and the Xie Qi is the SARS-CoV-2 is the um, agent that is inducing the disease is lower, the patient will not have the disease. But when the patient has the, uh, the less energy, the less uh, immune system, and the invasion of this external pathogenic factor is bigger, he will have more gravity of this infection. And the conclusion of this study is that patients with chakras energy deficiencies who acquire COVID-19 infection have been treated with precautions because the use of high concentrated medications such as antibiotics or anti-inflammatory, any kinds of medication will reduce even more the energy of the chakras even more leading to the formation of internal heat and consequently more inflammatory process and the use of high diluted medication, in this case, homeopathy for replenish and the treat all manifestation of these kind of patients are very important to reduce the complications and mortality associated with COVID-19 seen nowadays. Thank you for your attention. It's Hippocrates' quote, natural forces within us are the true healers of the disease. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer you. Thank you.